adopt. And the, and the framing that we adopt is, is we're interested in what is it the brain does to mm -hmm. make us so good at so many tasks, whether that's self-driving or manipulating objects or recognizing photos or any of these use using cases. Using tools. Using tools, all of this stuff are things that come very naturally to humans. I mean, when you think about our brains, is it just the internetworked nature of our brains? It is the neocortex. The neocortex. Yeah, so you you, uh, you have a reptile brain in, in right. your head, so do I. Yep. And then on top of it is this thin layer of tissue that's the, the size, shape, and thickness of a dinner napkin, if you lay it flat, called the neocortex. Hmm. And that's where all the magic happens. That is where you store all of your concepts, it's where you uh, control your motor actions, it's where you recognize things visually, how you process sound and taste and touch and smell. That's the, and the, the interesting thing about the neocortex is it's a really similar circuit. It's like mm. a repeated circuit all the way across the whole surface of it. So much so that if you take a tissue sample of one person's neocortex from these areas that are processing different, um, different modalities and give them to a trained neuroscientist, they'll have some trouble telling which samples from which area. It's mm. a really similar circuit. Interesting. And if you could unlock the secrets of that circuit, you can do a lot of stuff that humans do now. Hmm. And that's the goal of Vicarious. Interesting. So does that mean you're actually studying the neocortex in order to try to be inspired to find the solution? Or do you just think, hey, we can infer through psychological studies, from human factor studies, how a human goes about solving problems or understanding the world, and instead of from a biological circuitry perspective, a wetware perspective, you can go from a behavioral perspective and then build up from there. How do you so we go from a first principles perspective. Got so it. The, the extent that we look at, 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 at brains when we're building our artificial brains is the extent that the Wright brothers looked at birds when they were building airplanes, which is actually more than you think. For sure. So the reason why they don't flap, their, their plane didn't flap their, its wings is because they noticed that birds could fly without flapping their wings. And so that became a design choice. Right. Uh, and, and in the same way at Vicarious, we're looking at what are the, what are the information processing principles that are universal hmm. uh, and that we can understand how evolution may have come up with them Got when it. thinking about how does it develop this circuit to do everything for us. So what would one of those be? Have you, have you... The role of time. The role uh, of time in action, I would say, is, is, a, is a big one. Hey, everybody, let me take a moment to tell you about GoToMeeting, which I use all week long. Yes, I'm meeting all the new potential incubator companies and looking at their products, and I do it. I've taken my meeting game to the next level with GoToMeeting. It is so easy to use. I recommend it wholeheartedly. I've used it for years. It's so easy to collaborate with clients and colleagues from anywhere. And so be a meeting MVP no matter where you are. You can use your phone. You can use your tablet. You can use your desktop. It's so easy to uh, get these meetings going because, you know, you can just do it with one click. I have it in a Chrome toolbar in my Google Calendar. I put something in my Google Calendar or somebody else puts it in mine. One click, I add a go-to meeting, and then everybody just clicks on the link, and magically everybody's in there, perfect voice over IP, or they can dial in. Um, it works so well. And one of the little features that I love to use is I will have my executive assistant on the phone with me taking notes. You can also record the call. And we, of course, do that sometimes if we want to take notes. And there's a little chat room in there so I can chat with people and take notes. And I give startups my notes, my candid notes on what I think of their companies. So all these great little features. And one thing I love is I always have one or two people who are calling in. They're on the road. They've got noise. They don't know how to mute their phone. They forgot their headset. You, if you're in control of the meeting, can mute the participants. So you ever be on one of those phone calls and somebody's like in a wind tunnel, it's and you're like, who's doing that? Well, you can just go mute, boom, if you're the conference organizer. It works so beautifully. Those are my little tips for you. Um, screen sharing and passing it off to other presenters, another wonderful thing. I'll have a meeting with two or three people, and we'll pass the presentation one from one to the next. It just works. It's so easy for you to step up your meeting game. So I want you to do this right now. It's time for you to put out your best performance. Go ahead and be the meeting MVP of your next meeting. Just start your 30-day trial at gotomeeting.com. Click the Try It Free button. That's Once again, go to gotomeeting.com and click the Try It Free button. You are going to love it. I use it all the time. It gets my highest, highest rating. I love GoToMeeting. Okay, let's get back to this episode.